All right, so what's going on, people? Right now we're in Cleveland, Ohio, where I have a lot of properties to show you guys. And uh, this is gonna be straight raw footage, just to let you guys know of a day in the life of a group home owner, group home mastery. And if you wanna learn and do the same thing that I'm doing, I could teach you on literally everything. All right, so let's take a trip on the inside. We'll talk about the upgrades and the renovations that me and my partner is doing. Um, before we actually go on the inside, so just to let you guys know, a lot of the buildings that we acquired are sort of outdated. So if you see a lot of mess or semi, you know, things in the hallway, keep in mind we're renovating the building, but we're gonna talk about everything as we walk along. All right, so this right here is the uh, kitchen area. You do your licensing, right? Make sure you do your uh, certificate of occupancy. They're gonna tell you what you can do and what you can't do. So this one right here is R4 residential assisted living. And then you get your, your license to actually operate. And then we'll teach you all you have that at the group home mastery. So make sure y'all stay pay attention for that. All right, so right now we're in the kitchen area. We're doing some upgrades. The, uh, got my contractor guy downstairs. Uh, we're gonna lift the joists up. Got a little wobble. Um, we're gonna lift that up. We do all of the floors in here. And as you've seen, when you guys were in the eating area, uh, the carpet, gotta go. We don't do carpet no more. It's gonna be laminate flooring, waterproof laminate flooring. You come in here, the storage room. We already have a lot of the flooring um, in stock. And you see, uh, when we do a walkthrough of the building, um, there's more flooring throughout. All of the drop ceilings will be replaced. Um, it's gonna be hang, hung down and have a uh, drywall sheetrock and uh, recessed lighting that we're gonna put throughout, throughout the whole building. So uh, let's continue to walk through. All right, so you guys see, you always wanna have your ramp there for when uh, you have someone that may be handicapped that need wheelchair accessible so they can go up. Then we're gonna take all of the uh, carpet up, put down laminate flooring. Now we're gonna show you what we've done already. This is just the rooms that we're about to start. As you see in here, we have the laminate floors for this room. If you see this way, we have the laminate floors for this room. And we take a little walk through. So we updating everything. Uh, the room is, is very old, let me come to light for you guys. Room is very old. Uh, the resident here is actually in the room. We're gonna speak with him as well. Uh, the opposite room. He been in here for 20 years from when the previous owner uh, converted this into a group home slash uh, a care home, assisted living, called different things. And uh, we just gonna redo the whole thing, man. Um, repainting, taking out the old school drywall. I mean, uh, old school drop ceilings, I'm sorry and putting down the laminate floor. So it's gonna look real nice. And let me show you what we already have done. If you come through the back way, we already started ripping up the carpet. So we go through, we're gonna have light brown throughout the hallways and then every bedroom is gonna be dark brown. So I'm gonna show you how it's gonna look. Just imagine the vision. Old school panel, gotta go. It's gonna be drywall and sheetrock. You take a picture of me if you want. Okay, you want to be on camera? Why not? All right, cool, cool. <laughs> I was thinking, Anthony. Okay, talk to me. Okay, number one, there's a lot of stuff. Okay. Number two, I like my own space. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm dogging out Javon and Ryan, they're cool with me and all mm -hmm. that. And number three, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be able to put all my stuff in here. You know you got some in the closet right here too. But Javon got a lot of stuff in there. Okay. But I, I, don't, I, I don't feel comfortable with all the stuff. Okay, you know? so you want to go back in that room? I'm thinking about it, yeah. Okay. So I want to run it by you before we did it, okay. so. So let's do it like this. Whichever, what do I do? Whichever way makes you feel more comfortable. If you want to be back in that room, that's fine. Yeah, I think we, I'll be back in my own room. Okay, so we're going to do that room today. Yeah, uh, I'll I stay just, in here until okay. the time being. That's no problem. Okay. I can okay. stay here overnight. That's no problem. Okay, got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. That's okay. no problem. I yeah, can stay then, in here overnight. Yeah, then whenever you- I slept you, on the couch, I'm fine. Okay, then whenever uh, when, you- uh, uh, They do the room, uh -huh. I'll move back in. Yeah, no problem. Then because when they said Aunt, or what, what oh, I was saying, Dewey was uh, mm -hmm. going to do it today. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'll move back in. Uh, I'll move it back in today. Okay. After it's done with the floor. And then whenever uh, you want to come over here and play the game with Javon, you know you got yeah. to still play the game. That's fine. Is that cool of you? Yeah, that's cool. cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, okay cool. So we did the floors. 
the uh is not done we're gonna do some some trim around it and then the uh is gonna be drywall throughout the whole room and uh, we're gonna take the drop ceilings down here too add a new ceiling so javon can like it with some recessed lighting that sound cool yeah that sound awesome there that sound go. good okay there you go that sound good <laughs> so um so in here we're gonna take out the uh carpet and it's oh, gonna be the it's gonna be the light brown um, that we talked about in the hallway is going to be all in here and then the dark brown in the rooms and as you guys can see here too it's the old school panel in here too and the drop ceilings we're taking all of that down and redoing the whole thing so everybody's room going to be clean updated for the residents make sure that they happy staff is happy and then it gives the building a fresh new look so one thing i wanted to note to you guys uh we had to put things in the common areas from out of the bedrooms and then when it's fully completed is gonna go right back into the bedrooms. I don't want you guys to think like, oh, this spot is messy. <laughs> Not messy at all. We just had to put their things in the uh, common areas for the time being. And then we are gonna do a new new set for everybody. Um, Ron, they told me about the water too, the hot water, right? Daryl had told me about it. So we are gonna take care of that as well. The, the hot water, mm. the uh, cold water is mixed up. Oh, it's mixed up sometimes. Okay, because he told me somebody was replacing it a while ago, but I guess it was never fixed. But the lab is the cold. Ah. Uh, Look, cold water, hot water. I got you. Right. I got you. Yeah. Okay. So I have, matter of fact, I have Dewey take a look at it when he get done with uh, Joe's room. I have him take a look at it. And why is it not shutting all the way too? These are the things you're going to deal with. Yeah, these are the things I got to deal with, man. It's the things I got to deal with. So we're taking out all this. Everybody going to be happy. Right, Robert? Everybody happy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the carpet? No, no, the carpet going to go up. It's going to be the uh, the light. You see, no, did you go over that side yet? Uh, Down the steps? It's Look at that side. It's going to be the light brown. It's going to be in here. Yeah. Daryl in here? <laughs> yeah, he's sleeping, yeah. All right, so we're here. We just did the new floors, too. It's not done. We got to put the molding down. I ain't going to talk too loud because we got to rise and sleep in. But uh, it's new floors. Sheet rock in here, too. New cellars. Uh-oh. Why your room looking filthy? Well, you, I give you an excuse because I, I, we did order your dresser, but it comes Tuesday. Tomorrow. Yes? Yeah, it comes Tuesday. Oh, Anthony, thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I guess like the one I had. It's something like that. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. Is it going to be tall? Yeah, it's gonna, I think it's taller than this. Ask Camille. She ordered it. She did? Yeah, she ordered it for me. Is yeah. that going to be a long dresser? Nah, I think it may be. I okay, think it may okay. be. Yeah, yeah. So, with the, uh, where's, what happened to the loot dresser? It's right here. This one, this one is here? Yeah. Oh. Down. Okay. All right, so right now, um, we literally, like I told you guys, updating everything. So a lot of their dresses was old school from the last previous owner. So we throwing out all of their dresses and giving them brand new everything. So uh, excuse the mess. This is just temporarily. Uh, we just got done with their floors too. Got to do new molding around the room. Uh, we gonna repaint their room. Um, I know it's kind of backwards. So just to let everybody know with construction, you usually rip up the floors, paint, do everything first, then the floor is going to last. I wanted to clarify that. The reason why we had to do it this way is because when you put down the floors, you, we can't keep the residents out of their room too long because they won't have nowhere to stay. You can't have them sleeping in the hallway. So in the meantime, we had to hurry up and knock down the floors. And then we're going to do what's called uh, putting down drop cloth on top of the new floors. So when we paint, everything is still good. All right, this is the deck where they can congregate, socialize, smoke, relax all of that good stuff which we just got done painting but we got to do another coat of white paint and then uh see mr johnny you, you want to get my hand get a smoke break <laughs> okay go ahead go ahead i ain't gonna stop you i ain't gonna stop you you sure yeah i'm sure i'm sure <laughs> all right i appreciate you johnny if you look at the columns right you want to make sure you do things right the first time because in the long run it's going to be beneficial to you this is what the previous owner did. Had the, the slim columns, which is not sturdy at all for the residents. So when they go up there and socializing, which you probably hear them talking right now, that they are safe, everybody's all good. And then the uh, support columns, you know, is all sturdy with the new concrete. 
So then, you know, we don't have to worry about anything, man. You want to do everything right the first time so you don't have to take care of it again in the long run. And that's what we teach you guys. So let's take a look on this and I'm gonna show you something else that the previous owner did not do, which we were fixing right now. So now we're on the other side of the building, right? And we ripped up the carpet here. As you can see, the, the floors are extremely unlevel. But let me tell you what the previous owner did to hide things that they, I guess, didn't want to fix, right? So if you look at this right here, and I'm not gonna stand on it too much because I got my concrete guy. Sorry about that. I have my construction guy going down there and take a look at it. So y'all see that? Extremely weak. So what we're doing is adjusting the joists and adding new support beam columns in the basement so that when we do lay down the new laminate floors, everything can be smooth and level. Then that's pretty much it, man, you know? Just do everything right the first time. Update the building as you can. Don't worry about cash flow and all that stuff up front. I mean, that's important, don't get me wrong, but you wanna reinvest the cash flow into the building. And you know the cool thing about this stuff? This was a government grant we got for this. We already had the funds put to the side to take care of the building, but we waited a little bit to get the government grant because now the government grant fixes the whole building for us with no money technically out of our pocket. We're using the government money to fix up the own building, right? Keep in mind, this is a group home slash assisted living. Now they call it different things in Ohio. And then uh, that's pretty much it. All right, so the building that we just left, uh, that's the building that we have on Madison. Um, in Ohio, you usually have what's called the uh, east side and the west side. So we on the west side, now we heading over to the east side, two different areas, you know, two different sides of town. But the reason why uh, we really dove uh, to actually get this building is because we picked it up from a motivated seller. Uh, the seller just wanted out. They started the business 20 years ago. Um, did not know how to retain and hire the right staff. So that's what we did. One of the workers, she's not there right now. One of the staff members, the staff workers, she's off today. But, um, you know, that's another one. We hire one more. Um, and we actually hiring another person. So we actually te teaching the group home master how to retain staff, how to go after staff um, through different methods that we found to be uh, utilized effectively the right way though. Gotta be utilized the right way. And uh, this building, if you wanted to talk a little, you know, about numbers, this building we picked it up for 325, right? A still commercial building, 200,000, was allocated towards the commercial building and 125,000 was allocated towards the business. That is extremely, extremely low for both ends. Um, we actually in the process of doing a refinance right now. Um, I believe this building is, is worth with the business and everything closer to a million dollars. Uh, so that's a substantial amount of equity right there. And then uh, as we see, this is raw footage. This is what I get on a daily basis, different calls. So let's see what's going on. Hey, what's going on, Isaac? How you doing? Good morning. Thank you for sending me the deal. All right, so as you guys see, that's another deal that I'm doing a quick flip on in um, New Jersey. Uh, I could probably make about 20000 on that deal. We'll see. Um, I'm trying to squeeze them for some numbers and see if we can make it work. As um, long as it deal work for the seller and the buyer, that's all I'm happy with. You know, I can try to make my money in between and I can keep it moving to the next deal. But uh, we're talking about the Madison building, right? So the Madison building is interesting because number one, the location, as you guys are going to see, the location is 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 a plus, man. You know, um, when I say a plus, I mean, it's in a very good area. You know, that that, that area is like in a, a B ish area. Um, you're right next door to the suburbs. And then from there, um, you can get good rent. We'll talk a little bit more about the numbers just to get everybody a, a, a sneak peek of what's going on. So we get about 1,100 a bed. It's 16 beds right now. Right now we do have 13 residents. So we're in the process of filling up the other uh, beds as well. And um, it just, you know, it takes with building relationships with caseworkers and uh, hospitals, things like that, that can refer you our uh, residents, which we don't have a problem with that. Um, we just updating the building right now. So once it's more closer towards certain rooms being done, we will 
uh, start re redoing the marketing. So right now I actually slowed down the marketing because I don't want to get so much interest and people don't want to come in because they may have may they may see like uh, you know they walking inside they see things all over the place even though we know we renovating it. But you know let's see what happens. Um, the numbers three twenty five. Uh, we had to be close to $12 million, all, all, all said and done. So we have about, what, six, seventy-five, seven hundred thousand in equity uh, right there. And right there, man, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a home run for us. It was a home run for the seller, too, because they owned their free and clear. It was no mortgage. So for them, it was just pure cash flow. So for us, um, $1,100 per, y'all could do the math on that. You know, even, let's say if it's fully occupied, $1,100 times 16 people. Is uh seventeen thousand three hundred dollars somewhere around there, um coming in, and then uh, there's no debt on it. Me and my partner bought it all cash, so there's no debt on it right now. It's gonna be debt soon because we're doing a refinance, but you know even the mortgage amount when they sent me over the paperwork to uh, accept the terms and conditions um, prior to us scheduling over the uh, appraisal, man, we talking about twenty three hundred for the mortgage. Think about what I just told y'all. 17.3 coming in when it's fully uh, operating. Right now, it's 14, was it 14.3 somewhere around there? Or maybe 17.6. Somewhere around there. Y'all can do the math on that. And then uh, utilities and everything, we netting around 78, close to 8,000 a month, something like that. And you just backtrack it, throw your mortgage in there, 23, um, minus the 78. You know, you'll be netting about five or some change. Right now, as we speak, not including when it's fully occupied. So, that's pretty much that on that building, man. You know, I wanted to show you guys real live footage of what we deal with. Well, what I deal with on a daily basis. <laughs> and then uh, and how Ohio is a gold mine. And you can go into a market and not own the market, but do a lot of great things in the market as far as the community. Um, I'm, I'm building up, you know, the community. I'm taking people that was homeless. I'm giving them a safe, clean environment to stay in by um, outsourcing that, though, to caseworkers that I know that can get them funding for uh, uh, housing, that can get them case management, that if they need medication, you know, the insurance and things like that. So I have that in place with caseworkers as well, too. If everybody don't know what that means, it's uh, it's called LSWs. So LSWs is just a licensed social worker, and they can come in to help you uh, fill up your beds and things like that. See what programs you have going in. All right, so we at the sober living facility. So. It, it comes with the house, right? So more of when the people start getting more uh, stabilized, a you know, job, you know, things like that, we used to move them over to the house. So we're gonna adopt that same philosophy because I really love that. But here's the building. It's about 10,000 square feet. And then if you look at, here's the kicker, right? You check out the green, it looks like a normal garage. And then even during my due diligence phase, I didn't even realize this until the final walkthrough. It's an ADU unit. What do that mean? Additional dwelling unit. It was 20 beds in there. You know, it's uh, heating, plumbing, everything. Still good. I just got to refix it. So this is a distressed facility that we are going to put some money into. But you guys will see that, you know, the before. And then I'm going to show you guys the after as well. But this is can have 115 people. So uh, take you guys on the inside. Yeah, so right now you got uneven floorboards. We picked up the keys from the living house manager. It's not all of them, but living house manager and sober houses can run everything for you. Since this one is gonna be 115 people, 15 guys, it's gonna be about three to four living house managers. Um, and then some good history in this building, like even here, right? 
you got this guy named Jack Mahala. He actually started um, this sober place. He's uh, passed away now, but I read up about him. He's a very good guy. And uh, you had a lot of famous people that actually um, became sober throughout this uh, place. And uh, I forgot this guy's name, but he's one of them. And I plan on keeping the history in the building. He's one of them. Um, he was a famous baseball player in the early 70s and 80s. Uh, fell on some hard times, started using uh, uh, drugs. And uh, he became sober through here in Cleveland. And it was a famous football player as well, too. I got to get his name for you guys. So that's pretty much that. And then, um, you know, the stress, we're going to fix it up. And then if you go over there, you got the alcoholic 12 steps for people that want to remain sober. All right, so right now we're in the sober house, the first level. Um, as you see, distressed. Um, this a little backstory on it. This used to be a nursing home about, uh, I would say, 40 years ago. And then before there, it was a, a women's shelter. So now this is a sober living. That's why you see the doors are so wide because how that used to be as a nursing home. And that used to be a requirement. Well, still is a requirement. But as you see on this side, right, distressed. Um, a lot of this stuff, it needs to be gutted. But the potential is great. Um, you just got to get the work done to it. And as you see, this used to be a bathroom. So we're going to get the work done. Everything is all good. All right, so right here, you got the kitchen, right? I'm gonna show y'all why it's important to do construction in these buildings right, just like Madison the first time. Let me show y'all the joists. Heavy distress. So what my construction company is gonna do is get underneath the actual building, reassist the joists. Then when you reassist the joists, it keeps everything flat and flush. And this is the kitchen. Um, the oven doesn't work, so we have to figure out what's going on with that. Um, but it's cool because now I know if the oven don't work, people won't leave things on and things like that. So it's all right. You know, we we'll get to it. But we want to start with the fundamentals and the foundation of the building first. Make sure that's good. Then you work it, you work on the cosmetic things and the appliances and things of that nature. But let me continue to show you all around the building. Now we're on the second level. Let me show y'all some more distressed things that we're gonna be fixing. Well, a lot of this stuff gotta be gutted anyway, but like that. You know, this used to be a room way before we got it that they never fixed. You know, old school, things locked. We gotta replace all of that. All right, so uh, it's interesting, right? You guys come in here, this, was a room, <laughs> very little, but uh, we're gonna knock some of these pantry stuff down to make it water. Interesting. See the distress, but the opportunities are endless. So um, this would be bunk bed style, uh, four people, not to every room. You see some rooms are a lot are larger than others. It'd be probably about three to four, if you wanna put it like that. Some rooms just may be two people. Going to another bathroom. As you can see, the stress in here too. Used to be a tub. Then they put a washer in here, took the washer out, and never replaced the tub. Interesting. All right, so this used to actually be the chapel room, as you see. Um, but we're going to take this out and, and it'd be a regular room. Um, chapel services, we still continue downstairs, but we'll just make this a regular bedroom. Uh, somebody is in this room right now. So they got their rent receipt. <laughs> Old school stuff, man. <laughs> so let's see uh, if we can get into a bedroom. Okay. So nobody in there, but uh, this is how big the room is. And I'm shifting a lot of people around when we're fixing it. It'd be four people in here. It's a lot of space, bunk bed style. Two over here, two on this side, dressing in the center. It goes all the way around. 
So the bathroom, two bay, stand up. You gotta add new porcelain. You see this, it's covered. But you gotta add a new porcelain, new wax ring, that's what it's called. When you're putting down the toilet, new toilet, new vanity set. We actually, to cut calls, we're not gonna take out the old school towel. We're gonna reglaze. So when you reglaze, it's gonna pop out white. And it's gonna look real nice, add a new vanity set. It's gonna be real nice when it's done. But this is uh, what we're dealing with right now. All right, so now we're at the side of the building, right? Let me show you how big the building is. It's a big building. And not only that, you know the crazy part? I was telling y'all, the ADU, additional dwelling unit. So you had this filled up at one point. So the additional dwelling unit had, as you see the beds are still in there. Uh, it stink right now, so I don't wanna go in there. But <laughs> it, it used to have 20 beds in here. It has heat, electricity, cooling, the whole nine. So he had it wired out. And he had additional people back here. So that's icing on the cake. Cause uh, the initial walkthrough, I just counted the house and the building, which is the package. Now it's a bonus for us for the, the ADU. This is the house. Mm -hmm. Smell like uh, he just cleaned up, but somebody was supposed to move out. And I see they did. Okay. So you see, this is a pretty decent sized room too. You could have two people in here. Um, the previous guy dropped a lot of the walls. Same thing I would have did, very smart. Hey, what's going on? Um, here, uh, for the old school tile, we're gonna reglaze. We're gonna take out uh, cabinets, um, vanity sinks. You see with some moisture coming in from the roof, we gotta touch the roof first before we take care of that. But then, um, yeah, you know, simple rehab, nothing too crazy. It seems like a lot, but if you if you are familiar with construction, then you know how to make things work. So I'm gonna take you guys upstairs. So we're here in the second level. You have a split, and we're gonna keep it like this on purpose. So we have so many people in the house. One people could uh, use the the restroom, and the other person could take a shower. Eight bedrooms. One, two. I think it's two bathrooms, but you know, let's see what's going on. Another one gotta fix up all of this. Oh, as you see in this room, which is a room I never even seen. See all of this? That's mold and everything. Gotta take care of the roof first. It may seem scary, like a lot of construction. You're like, oh man, you know, why would I get into something like that? But you gotta look at the end goal. And you gotta run your numbers first before you even get into a project. So it may seem scary, but it's doable, you know? And uh, even if you're not licensed, we license for construction, so we do all our labor at calls, no markups. But even if you are going with your own GC, which means general contractor, you can still make the numbers work. You know, work with good, reputable people. They can get it done for you. And then you, you have a good outcome. You have a lot of uh, cash flow after you get done helping people. So keep that in mind. All right, so this is the tour of the 115 bed facility. And uh, this is how it look now. I wanted to give y'all real raw live footage and uh, pay attention to when it's done, you know, how much people we're gonna help in the process. So that's what my heart is for. And then uh, the cash flow comes after, but people first, then profits. But we'll talk about that. All right, so right now, if you see here, uh, this is a property that um, we transformed into a group home, but it's on Airbnb right now. So you gotta get creative. It's rented out 25 days out of the 31, 30 days out of every month. And then it's bringing in nice cash flow for us. And then uh, we actually put down new 
cement that the city made us do uh, for the driveway as well too. So we'll take you more on the inside. If you've been following my Instagram, um, by the way, that's Anthony underscore the investor. Then uh, I talked a little bit about how I found it, the numbers, you know, things going on now. So it's doing very well on Airbnb though. So I'll take you guys on the inside. All right, so right now we're in the basement. As you see, picked this property up sometime last year. Um, everything is brand new. The basement is waterproof. Um, warranty for 10 years. Brand new with the last two to four years. Same thing with the furnace. Uh, we have this bad boy on Airbnb and it's making some good numbers. So we come in here. So we got this all set up. This is actually can be turned into a room, which we have some ideas about it. But, um, you know, and down here's the dining area for Airbnb. And then, uh, yeah, you know, we're going to take you on the upstairs so you can see the whole layout. All right, so now we're in the living room area. You know, it's the Airbnb, as we talked about. I want to show y'all, you know, a little bit of um, what we got going on, right? So this is the bathroom area. This is the, the bedroom area. You know, got the bedroom, regular standard stuff. This is in Ohio. You got another bedroom. Smells good, it's clean. Want to give a nice, clean, soft environment for the Airbnb guests. And then we have something else on the upstairs level. I call it sort of like a bonus in a way because it's, it's a little bit out from the other bedrooms. So this area right here is another bedroom, which I could chop it down and split it, but you know, we'll see if I want to add another bedroom or not. You know, give a warm space, people that want an Airbnb in Cleveland, and then uh, have a nice big family. They wanted somewhere clean to stay, fresh, a good neighborhood. This is what we're doing, and while we're still getting the group home license. So I just wanted to show you all different opportunities that I'm working on right now. This combined with this and then they're not done, they're putting up another one. So this is gonna be right here, man. I'm telling you, you wanna buy where the construction is happening because the value is gonna go up, more people are gonna come in the area, it's gonna be more demand, more jobs, more more growth overall. That's where you wanna go. And they still not done because they're gonna build all the way back here, or oh, it's gonna be something else that connects over to the apartments as well, too. So it's always good and then the properties I have, which is the assisted living facilities, they're not too far from here, a couple blocks away. But I wanted to show everybody what's going on with the construction, because it's always good to buy in areas that's being uh, actively either renovated or new construction. This is a property that we bought that I didn't even get around to doing yet because uh, we have a lot of other projects, but we're gonna knock it out as well. Um, but this project right here is gonna be a sober house, 24 beds. And then um, he's gotta change the lock for me. Um, crazy story for the closing, the broker was very, that's like a very nice guy. And he actually passed away. Um, the day of the closing, which is crazy. So I will, that's something I will always remember. Just count your blessings, be grateful for everything that you have, and keep in mind, you know, the smallest stuff counts. And um, as you go along your journey, just be grateful for the process too, because it's not gonna be easy. Anything in life worth having is not easy, but it's doable and attainable. So this is the sober house right here. Very big house. So this uh, right here is a 12 bed, four bathroom. I believe this is 40, no, 4,000 square feet. And then um, 
the plan for here being as though it's I mean I may actually be able to do 26 beds actually but I'll do 24 to be conservative uh, two to a room not four and uh, 12 beds so 12 times 2 24 beds and uh, four bathrooms and uh, I mean I believe this is about 4100 square feet somewhere around there it's a very huge house and uh, I've been closing on so many deals I didn't even get around to do the construction yet so this week we probably um, gonna start construction sometime this week or next week and then I'll get the ball rolling with this one cool thing is the neighbor who cars this is next door he looks out for the house for me so I had a good conversation with him he's a very nice person and then uh, he said he'll definitely look out for everything so it looks like nobody ever vandalized the property or anything like that since he has a lookout on it there's so many vehicles people don't know if people live in it or not so even though it's bush is high but you never know all right so <laughs> just find out the door wasn't even locked all the way so now i have to find out if we got squatters which i don't think we do this property been pretty good but we're gonna find out together little bathroom right here this bathroom need to be fully uh whew, what you gotta do it another bedroom we got another bedroom we got another bedroom Got the bathroom with the skylight view. Look at that. Look at the characteristics of that right there. You don't even catch that no more. Got another bedroom right here, which that's why I was telling you guys, I could probably do more than four people, two people if I wanted to, but I, I probably won't do that. Another bedroom. And look at this huge bedroom that can fit about eight people in here. And it goes all the way around. Or if I wanted to make this into a closet for him, I could do that too. But look at the characteristics of this sober house right now. Look at this, look at this, right? Thank God, praise God, they're absolutely right. Cause we're gonna change the community up by doing these sober houses, uh, VA homes, group homes, whatever I'm doing, you know, it's definitely beneficial to the community. This is the third floor? This is the third floor. This is the third floor. And uh, that's it for this house, man. You know, it's, 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 it's huge. It's an animal and I'm excited to start the construction. So as we go along this journey, I'm going to bring y'all with me. All right, so right now we're in the 35 beds uh, in one of the buildings. It's two buildings, two separate streets, but side by side. And uh, we're going to do a little walk through the building, um, try to get some real footage for you guys. Just to let you know what you guys uh, could possibly do in the licensed facility. So take off there. Okay, so right now we're about to have a meeting and then I get back to y'all. This is the seller that actually sold us the building. So we're wrapping some things up and she's helping us out with a lot. Absolutely, right. So we, we're I'm um, taking do a walkthrough and then we'll work on so many other things so we can make sure we have everything we got. Sounds like a plan. Okay. So I'll see you tomorrow, Ms. Burns. Right, see you tomorrow. All right. <laughs> a lot of people are in the rooms right now, so I wish I could see the inside. This is the employee's closet. Keep the linens. This is another room. The cool thing about this building too is a daycare here too. So daycare is actually on this side. Nobody like here right now, but it used to be a uh, car garage. She knocked that out. The previous owner that I was just talking about, and uh, put a dink in. All right, so let me go around here. Let them do their thing. All right, so we're gonna go around the back. All right, so let's get to the top. Um, everybody's in a room right now, but you can see this number. 
and they just had dinner as well. So usually when they have dinner, they, they like to uh, relax, rest. So I usually don't go in the room as much. All right, so <laughs> this is the uh, other building. It's right next door to this building right here. Two different streets, but happen to be side by side. So um, one building is 18 uh, residents, and this building I think is 17, somewhere around there. And then, uh, I'm gonna take you guys on the inside so you can take a look. See a number in each room. It's the hallway we just came up. They all numbered. So only one person to a room in this building. And here, it's just like a uh, school. During the tour room style. Hold the up. Thank you guys for the basement where we utilize the basement here as well as a daycare just like the building next door but the daycare over this side is for uh, older kids. Let's see here uh, for daycare you can come down here sometimes the kids are um, together from both sides and uh, we have this space leased out huge space as you see triple net lease that's it for down here and if you guys don't know what a triple net lease is that's the net we get the net payment of the taxes insurance and maintenance all right so as you see we're coming to a conclusion of the tour of the facility we have two commercial buildings one is roughly around 11,000 square feet the other one is around I want to say like 92-ish, somewhere around there. Uh, that's the, the, the moral of the story is you want to do what's right for you and your investing style. My investing style is I like to look at how can I help people that's within the community that need the housing. So here is we ran more like a nursing home slash assisted living facility, which we're actually upgrading the license from group home to assisted living. So I wanted to uh, show you guys what I deal with on the day to day. <laughs> Probably some of the phone calls y'all got, but it's a lot of the phone calls y'all didn't see that I'm about to start answering right now. So it's so a day in the life for me, uh, group home owner, uh, personal care home, assisted living, coach, consultant, whatever you want to call them, real estate investor, commercial real estate, a lot, lot of different names, construction, which we ain't even do construction jobs. But I uh, hope that y'all enjoyed this clip and I wanted you guys to see what's possible, you know, um, when you actually go out there and live your, your passion and your purpose.